We're going to listen to an interview now, um, and that's going to be um, between Bob and Mareka. They're going to talk about, or Mareka is going to talk about, Bill's, uh, Bob's going to ask, um, about how uh, spirituality has been nurtured in one circuit. Bob, over to you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Roger. I could I could listen for hours, and um, uh, but it's it's a great privilege to be here, and it's uh, and it's lovely to to look around this room and realise that uh, amongst us we come from all sorts of different places. I'd I'd love to ask you all where you're from, but um, uh, but we don't have time for that. But I'm certainly going to ask Mareka um, where she's from, where where she is, and uh, and what she does. Um, so tell us, uh, Mareka, whereabouts do you come from? Actually, I'm going to answer this differently today. I come from Leicester, um, in case there's any Leicester links in there. I currently live in Killamarsh, which is um, a village, an expit village in northeast Derbyshire, about 10 miles south of Sheffield. Um, so I'm part of Sheffield Circuit, and I've been a worship leader for about 15 years. I could look it up, but hey, who's counting? Um, and I work still, so I work for the South Yorkshire Community Rehabilitation Company, which is part of the privatised probation service in this country, and um, until we get renationalised later this year. Um, and um, so I spend my time looking at quality and doing audits of work, and are we doing the work we should be doing, which I quite enjoy. Fantastic. So uh, thank you for mentioning Leicester. That did, uh, that did surprise me. I had no idea uh, that you came from Leicester. Um, I know that you live close to the uh, the best city in the uh, in the world, as far as I'm concerned, Sheffield, where I went to university. But um, um, wherever we're from, uh, from uh, whatever context we uh, we live and worship, um, Methodist way of life is starting to touch us in different ways. And I'm just wondering, uh, Mareka, how did you come across uh, Methodist way of life? Well, yeah, it was about this time a bit earlier than this last year I think it was February in I read an article in the Connection magazine and at the side of the article there was um it was a two-page spread and right on the I think right hand side there was a little column with the commitments um typed out and um I can't scan or anything clever like that so I retyped it out myself and made bookmarks which I gave to everybody in my chapel um, because I just thought it was such a nice, concise way of, of really encouraging people to think. And we were just about to go into Lent and I thought this is a bookmark people could use during Lent or use it as a sticker or put it on their fridge or whatever um, to start thinking about what is it that makes us Methodist. Excellent. So that's how you came across um, uh, Methodist way of life. And you've said a little bit about what appeals to you um about it but um obviously you've taken you've taken methodist way of life and you've you've kind of taken it a little bit further haven't you so do you want to uh, do you want to tell us about um what you then did with that idea amongst your church okay yeah so as i say i mean um we started with just the bookmark and then we went into lockdown obviously how can anybody forget and it went on to a bit of a back burner but as a chapel we went on to um hosting a weekly service very quickly online um, and kept all of our members by doing that, which was just brilliant. And in fact, gained some who'd moved away. Um, and of an evening, we had a week, a, a, a nightly Skype talk, one night a week that morphed into a quiz. Um, and that was just really good because between seven and 7.30, people could just drop in and say what their days had been like. We've got quite a few people who work as, as key workers or family members as key workers, so it was a way of supporting them. We've got quite a few people who are single, so it was making sure that people had somebody to talk to in a day if they'd been locked in the house all day. So, so the Skype talk started very quickly, probably second or third week into um, lockdown. It was really quick. Um, our, one of our Circuit Co Supers started a Facebook page about looking at Methodist way of life, initially for Sheffield, but it's actually become a national page now. And that morphed into a prayer session led by various people. I mean, she still leads the prayers quite often, but other people in the group have started leading prayers and supporting that by lots of other people dipping in and saying, well, who can I pray for and how can I pray for you tonight? So there's a whole community of prayer there. And in my church, some of us sort of 
dipped in and out of that, but it wasn't what we were looking for somehow. Um, over time, and certainly I suppose during the summer when when it eased, when conditions eased a bit and we, we came out of it and we were allowed to go out a bit more, um, we started up tentatively our coffee morning and somebody, one of the other stewards at my church said to me, could you do something with a bit more depth? Because these Skype talks were okay right at the beginning when we were all, none of us knew what we were doing. But every evening just saying to each other, how are you, it has limitations. So, um, so I said, ah, well, it's funny you should ask. And we've struggled to host regular Bible studies. I mean, I've been up here for 20 years now and we've tried several times and they work for a bit and they fizzle away and then they work for a bit and they fizzle away. And this time it's been really clear that people have had more time, fewer other distractions. And so people really have committed. And so we've been doing a weekly look at the questions that came out later. So for me, the statements and the commitments came out first and then I became aware of the questions partly by uh, the co-super of using them and then partly by going on the national website and reading more. So I got copies of the questions for everybody and we've um, gone through twice now. We're actually taking a little break for Lent and um, we're doing a book called Living by the Rule, which I'll talk about in, in the next section, um, by Cathy Galloway. So, but it's very much, it's, it's a link. It's about the Iona community's rule. So, but no, so we've, um, yeah, managed to get a really stable group looking and um, yeah, slowly getting deeper. That's fantastic. And um, I'm just uh, amazed by the number of different ideas which have come together and, and the, the ideas that you've used to, um, to reach out um, in this way and to explore um, the Christian life among people who you know, maybe don't necessarily find it that easy to talk about this sort of stuff. Um, what difference would you say that it's made in the, in the life of, of your group and, uh, and the church uh, that you're serving? Definitely. Yeah, I think um, we are. I mean, it's the things that Roger talked about, isn't it? It's the things about building that honesty, being prepared to go that bit deeper, moving beyond the superficial of coffee and how are you and how's your family and, you know, the nicey nice stuff and actually going into, well, how are you spending your money? What are you doing for creation? You know, some of those more searching ones, but also the prayer questions, which as Roger says, it can be very difficult for people. One of the things we've also got is a WhatsApp group and actually the connection between the two has been great. And I think because we've been talking more about prayer and praying in the group, um, we've got a prayer diary that prays for each member of the church community over a month. And so in the weekly group, we pray for the people who are in that week's part of the diary. Um, so that is helping, I think, and helping to get to know what people want praying for. But the WhatsApp group is just prayer requests are in there all the time. Please pray for, you know, Aunt Sally, who's just been diagnosed with or Tom, who's got a new job or so and so who's moving or so a lot more requests for prayer. I mean, I'd run the prayer diary for the church for years and got one or two requests a month. And, and, it's, and that really has blossomed, I think, from us actually having more opportunities and more methodologies and opportunities to actually talk about prayer and, and encourage people to know that it's OK to ask for prayer. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, it sounds like the group's really flourishing in all sorts of different ways as a result of opening up this, uh, the, all these possibilities. Uh, wonderful. I mean, is there anything um, that you say that your group or your church has found a bit challenging about you know looking at all this uh, all this stuff um, yeah, and yeah. I, I really liked I mean Roger mentioned it um the we and then that uh, but it's a balance between the I and the we because actually certainly the first time three people were as a church you know we talked about strengths and weaknesses and as a church I think we're much stronger on the learning and caring especially the caring side and the serving side and we're not as strong on the prayer and evangelism side, although we're good at worship, um, I think. But it, it, it's been really interesting to see how getting people to stop saying we do and actually asking them to say, well, I, what do I do? You know, we as the church do, yes. But what does do I as an individual do? And that's OK to say and I as an individual can't do or I as an individual struggle to. 
Um, we had a meeting last night and I was using a bit from Peter in that meeting and talking about, you know, very much that God calls us to do what we can, not what we can't, which again, as Roger says, is very much at the top as we are able. But somebody, we were doing justice and peace last night. We ended up talking about nuclear weapons. It was wonderful. Um, but one person said, I just can't cope with this stuff. I can't do this. It's too complicated. But she does so many other things. And it was so good to be able to say to her, yeah, but actually there's three or four of us who love this side, but we're not all called to do this side. You also do that side that is just as valuable and just as important. Yeah. So I think um, that's been really interesting. Another challenge was definitely some people said, once we'd finished, oh, do we have to do this again? Because I said, OK, we've got to the end of 16 questions. Let's go back to the beginning. Oh, why? And uh, one of the members who's just brilliant said, well, I have breakfast every day. And I just thought that really summed up this idea of, you know, we all say we're going to have a fair time every day or we're going to study our Bible every day. But we know that people don't always manage that. Most of us manage to have breakfast every day. <laughs> And we don't say after 16 weeks, I'm going to stop having breakfast or whatever. And it was just to actually say, this is part of life. It's not just a, a study topic to be a study topic. It's about developing those patterns. We were lucky that we followed on from having spent two years as a circuit looking at holy habits. So it was a way of taking some of that work we'd already done and then actually revisiting some of that and saying, OK, where are the links between but that to me did feel like a package, although it was about forming habits as well. But this is so much about that rhythm of life that Roger talked about, that it should be our ins and outs of breathing or our breakfast every day or whatever we want to call it. Yeah. Fantastic. I love the breathing analogy, but I also I also love the breakfast thing. I mean, I partic particularly, uh, I guess I'm a breakfast fan, you know, a big bowl of porridge every day. Yeah. Um, and I, I can really get that, the, the idea that we keep going with this because mm -hmm. we need replenishing uh, yeah. as each, each day goes past um you've slipped in the word rule a couple of times you know and, and yeah. i'm intrigued to, by where you see the link between a methodist way of life and and, and this word rule yeah um as i said we're, we've stopped for lent to look at living by the rule which is a little book by kathy galloway really little if anybody wants to have a look at it for it um i like a rule i like a structure um, which is quite funny because I'm quite rebellious in other areas, but I like that sense of rhythm. I like that sense of balance between different aspects of worship and life and holiness and wholeness and social justice and outreach and caring for the individual and all of that richness. I think for me, the rule, but the rule has been a word that, that some people in, in, in the group have struggled with, but for me, the rule keeps me rather than me keeping the rule it's not about something I've got to do and I've got to make sure I've done everything it's more if you do these things your life will be better and I go back to the fact that, you know I think my calling you know Roger talked right at the beginning about our callings our calling is is based on a rule for me it was anyway of you know love God love your neighbor as yourself those are two very simple rules that if I have to sum up my faith, that's what I'm trying to do. Now, you can call them a commandment, you can call them anything you like, but they're just things that actually, for me, say, my life is better when I try to do those things. And so the rule for me is trying to make my life better and therefore, hopefully, the people around me also, so that I'm more helpful or loving or caring. So, yeah, the rule is... Um, and it's about the mutuality of the rule. It's not a rule for me. It's a rule for us as a church. So again, if, if one of us is struggling with prayer or one of us is struggling with something, we can say, well, actually, it's OK because other people are doing that bit. Again, very much what Roger said in the introduction. Um, so I'm trying to think what else I said about rule last time, but they're, they're the main things. <laughs> <I think. laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, yeah I, I, it, it helps me. And I think it, it's the structure. It's not an end in itself. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, yeah, a way of life. It's, it's what, what, what the title is, really. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Mareka, for sharing uh, with us uh, what's happening and, um, and how a Methodist way of life is working out in, in Killamarsh. Um, it's been a real privilege to uh, to get to know you a little bit and to uh, to speak to you about this. Uh...